Hi, I'm Sarah Poff here at Midcontinent Public Library with a simple painting to teach you today. Simple with its steps, but really cool when you pull it together. So I will uh, show you step by step, and this will be in a recorded so that you can come back to it and you can uh, review those steps if you need to later. All right, let's switch to the painting. So what we're doing, have you noticed it's starting to get fall outside, the days are growing longer, there's, the days are growing longer, the days are, are getting less, the night's growing longer, it seems always this time of year, we know that's not true, but we start thinking about the harvest moon, that's what this painting is called, is the harvest moon, and so those pumpkins start to turn orange, and we start to think about the smoke that uh, we smell from the leaves burning or the fire, the campfire, just enjoying the smells of the season. As we get ready to head into fall, we have this nice painting. All right, so some of the supplies, I just have a simple canvas. Of course, you could use watercolor and use watercolor paper. You could uh, use a piece of uh, poster board. I've painted on poster board before. You could also do your oils and, and the steps. A lot of the steps are just gonna carry through to whatever you choose to do. So if you wanna take one more look at my painting there, and then I'm gonna move it to the side and we're gonna start with are black because we need to paint this painting fairly fast in a simple way to be able to accomplish it. I hope that no matter whether you are a artist or you are a beginning artist that you will enjoy the steps. You can always add your detail into it. All right, here we go. We want to leave space for our moon. Now, you could bring in a circle if you want. However, my Art teachers just said to do it lightly. I've seen people who did dots. So what I'm doing is I'm making the moon, that bit, that circle of the moon, I'm just kind of sketching it in because as you see with mine, there's gonna be some outflow of it. So the fact that you don't have a exact circle line there is really not a problem. So I don't want to paint that black but I want to paint this black. I have my acrylics over here. I'm just simple. I have red, yellow, blue, black, white, green, brown. Brown and green are kind of, you know, I use more green a lot of times. Brown is kind of hard to mix at the last moment, so that's why sometimes I have those. And so I want to paint dry. Um, I want to paint dry because we're trying to get this done in one hour. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna paint dry. See, I just dripped it in. I'm using craft paint instead of in the tube. And I'm just wanting to paint very dry because I want to be able to paint this whole painting and I wanna come back on top of this black. Now, I'm gonna also leave space here as I'm painting this in. I have a not quite a half circle and that's going to be where I'm going to have my pumpkin. You could take a plate if you wanted for that shape. You can do like we did on the other. You could just pencil it in or as you're painting just leave that arch just like that. Okay so I'm just painting, painting light spreading the paint out as much as I can because we're trying to get this done fairly quickly. It's kind of like, you know, if you were going to do a color sheet, but we're using paints, we're just, you know, filling it in. Now, if you are one of those people who would like to add more detail, you know, get the basics in. This is how you save a lot of time on it. Get the basics in. And then you can always come back and add more details to it. Um, I just, you know, I'm just really big on let's get the basics done. I've read that you can spend so much of your time just, you know, like we could have started with this because it's the light color on the moon. Uh, however, if we leave space for it, it's acrylic. If we need to paint over it after it dries, it's just all right. We can do that. 
The main thing, like I said, is just to keep it just a very light coat, very light coat, so it will dry fast. Paint, 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 paint. I like to paint, paint, paint. Sometimes when I was in the elementary classroom, I came up with a little song. Um, you know, I'm sure there's a song that goes with it. Um, but I would just do something like that so that um, it would keep the kids going. And it keeps me going, too. Sometimes I just need a little bit of paint, 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 paint. I like to paint and fill in the space. I did it to keep the kids on task and not talking so much. One time this kindergartner, it was the end of the year, and he says to me, he's like, well, Mrs. Pop, I'm just so sorry, so very sorry that you didn't get to be the music teacher. You're always singing to us. So that tells you, you know, it took a little bit to keep them still and keep them going on their projects. But I tried my best to do that. And that's what I do when I, when I teach, no matter what age I teach or who I teach, I just try my best to keep going and telling you enough of what you need to do and encouraging you enough. I hope that you are being able to follow this and that maybe you have a bunch of people gathered around you. You know, this would be fun for a paint party at your house. Um, get together and do it. And then always, you know, at the end of the uh, YouTube broadcast, you can always tell us about how your experience was with this. Because I always want to get better with what I'm doing. Okay, so there's my black. Now I'm going to take my trusty hair dryer. quickie to to get that dry because remember we painted it real light I can rub my hands on it now there's a couple areas that still are a little bit wet but I'm just going to stay away from those as I'm painting in my my two areas all right so now I just bring up my collection of brushes oh yes there's a right brush for this and a right brush for that and and yes um, you could do that but I don't. I just put them all in here and I let the whoever I'm doing teaching a painting class to, I just let them use whatever and uh, we figure it out and we get it done. So don't worry about it if you don't have every little supply. Just have the basics. They'll still paint. They'll still do. And I'm doing the same thing here. I'm just going to go for a yellow. Just paint the whole thing in yellow even if I want to try to improve my circle there for my moon and of course we know we don't always see every little section of that moon and then see like how that is the blackest black under there well it kind of looks like the dark side there you know we know there's some spots on that moon when we look up and then sometimes if the paint's not quite as dry you'll pull in paint from the black now I try to go one direction you know I don't want to go scribbling across I'm trying to like go one direction with it because it will look better if you do that. See how that just, you know, you can see the dark side there. Kind of helps giving that round in, rounding technique. I'm excited for fall. I always like the sights and sounds and the taste of fall and the festivals, and Mid-Continent uh, Pot Library does such a great job at bringing in programming of all different kinds that helps us enjoy the different seasons. I still remember when I walked in to a Mid-Continent Public Library, my children had grown up and I had taken them, we lived in Blue Springs, and I had taken them to the library and we'd had a great time with that, but I didn't realize how much programming they had changed. And it was so cool. Now I'm gonna go back in here and I'm gonna like remove a little bit of that paint because I think, because I'm trying to stay dry, I've got a little too 
much. Now while it's still a little damp there, I'm going to add a little white to it. And there again, I'm still using that step. You might have seen there for a second, I, I went the wrong way and I had to correct myself. You know what happens to all of us. It just does. Some of us just admit it a little more than others. So, all right. Now I'm gonna let that dry a bit while I'm working on the pumpkin, and then I'll come back and I'll add a, a little bit of more color in there. Oops, I think I need my paper towel. All right, here we go. Now, I went to check my paint, and I pulled red and yellow. I did not pull my orange in there, but it's not a problem. Like I told you, you just need the basics. It's not a problem. So I'm just going to mix yellow and red together. Now what I do when I mix a color, the red is more intense than the yellow, so I just pull a little red to the yellow. and then I make my orange from it. Now this, my artist eye, tells me that the craft paints, which is true with craft paints a lot of times, you can tell that my orange is not quite as bold of orange. The, the craft paints, yes, we can uh, buy them a lot cheaper. However, sometimes they're not as pure a color. They add in to them a lot of different colors that aren't quite to that pure color. But we still have an orange. It's still going to work for us. So I'm going to block in the pumpkin. Now, I really should not be going that way because on the pumpkin we have the direction of those ribs we often refer to it. Now the pumpkin's trying to get away from me there. So I really ought to be going down and go ahead and create those lines. Because then that will help when I'm working on the rest of it. There we go again, paint, 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 paint. Fill in that spot. And on the first part of this, I'm just trying to fill in the color. Fill in the color. And even with the lighter strokes, so you don't see as much of the strokes, at first, just, just fill it in. That's the best way. All right. So I got the first part of that done. Now, I want to put in a stem. Now, I always have a still dilemma because we all know what a still looks like this time of year. They're starting to be brown. Now, you can still see there's some green in there, but they're starting to be brown. Um, pumpkins look really cool with a green still, even when you're painting something like this, but that's your choice. Uh, in this painting, you can see that I did brown. You know, it might have looked better if I did if I'd done green and brown. Maybe we'll try that on this one. Well, sometimes you just paint it again. This is a painting that you could, if you wanted to, you could paint it more than one time and give it as a present. Okay, so I'm going to start with brown. So I'm just going to make me an arch, just kind of a rainbowish arch, arch, making it wider as I get to the pumpkin. Okay, I'm going to switch brushes because I want to kind of round this on the end. And if you put your hand down on the painting, you get paint on your hand. So I'm going to try to stay up. But I also want it to blend some there. So I think I will try that out like I saw in this still. You know, I'm always trying to make myself better. So I'm going to add me a little green in there. 
Now I don't want that green to like be that bright. That's just way, way too bright. So what I'm gonna do is get me a, this brush works better. Sometimes the um, students that I teach or the um, granddaughters, they get into my brushes and they don't always clean them as good as they should. So sometimes they're a little stiff, but we can always make it work. Okay, I think I might just leave it like that now. I'll let it dry a little bit, because part of what's bleeding through is the fact that we have the black behind there. So we want to let that be. Now, I think what I want to do is add in my leaves, that paint, because it might need a couple of coats there, because we did do the black, because the black would be so hard to get in there in and around things and would take us a really long time to do. And that's, you know, one of the terms that they call it is they call it back painting. And I do, you can't see off the camera, but what I do is I don't rinse out my brushes till I'm totally finished. So here you see my brushes. And I just lay them to the side till I'm totally finished. And I just am constantly grabbing a new brush if I need. That's why I have that big old container that's why I have this big old container of all kinds of brushes, because that way I can go faster. That way I can go faster. All right, so I'm going to like just put a little bit of shape here, like a leaf. Now, as you see, I didn't really try to do a specific kind of leaf or exactly. The art professor I had said, you're just trying to give him a generalization of what this shape is, and their brain will take over and go, oh, well, that's a leaf. So that's kind of what we're doing. All right, let's get a couple of orange. I love the, the orange is a fall. One time I lived in Texas, in South Texas, and oh my goodness, I was from Missouri. Oh my, Texas is a hard place to live when you're so used to all the different seasons. All the seasons. Remember what I told you is, it doesn't have to be perfect. It might take a couple of coats to go on top of that black. It's better to finish a painting that's not perfect because you are learning. And there's no one who's ever perfect on these. There's always something you could do to get better. I remember our, once I got up college, I brought my paintings home and I hid them. I actually hid them from my painting class behind the dresser, you know, or behind the chest. Well, you know, because there were several of them. Of course, I had to take a lot of those painting classes back in the day. And it's like, I just don't know. They're just not finished. They don't look good. What am I supposed to do about all this? You know, just kind of whining about it. Well, I went, I used to have to go on um, family visits to, to the students I was teaching when I taught preschool. You name it, I taught it. And I taught preschool during a period of time. And I remember going to this one house. And there was a painting on their fireplace. They had a lot more money than I did. And I thought, oh, who is that in that painting? There were three people. And I finally figured out that it was the family because there was a blonde-headed boy, there was a blonde-headed lady, and a dark-headed man. And you know what I did? I thought my painting looks as much like us as that because I painted one of my husband and me when we were getting married, right? You know, that engagement picture, I had, I had painted that in oils. Uh, I'm sorry, in acrylics. And I thought, well, I'm just gonna pull it back out. And when people come to my house, it's not finished, I didn't finish it. I never did go back and do that because I was afraid I would mess it, mess it up more. I got my gray on and I just walked away. And so I said, you know, I'm just gonna put it out. I'm just gonna put it out. I'm gonna put a bluish one in here. You know, I used to think, oh, well, there's not those colors. And then I came across once in a while, you'll see something that's a little bluish or a little, a little purplish red. 
You can add any colors you want, though. Remember that part. Okay. So we've got that going. Now, let's see. I want to take care of, I looks like I might need to come up a little more on my pumpkin, which means I need to mix a little more orange. Now I think I want to give my pumpkin another coat and add some more of the rib ribbing in it. Now you could make a white pumpkin. Um, you know, we know there's there's out and there we know what people have all different colors these days, especially when they they buy pumpkins at um, the store for decoration. However, my thought is, and what I always told my students, is if you don't paint as good, you haven't learned all the techniques about what it makes to make a pumpkin or whatever you're painting, it's better to stay with the traditional color. They were always wanting to make yellow apples and green apples and all that. Well, that's right, you're right. There are those things. Uh, there are apples those colors, but you know, you've got to be pretty good at making an apple for it to look like an apple when it's green or when it's yellow because our mind jumps, like the professor said, the mind jumps to what we relate to the most with that. Okay, now you can see that that's looking better. We're covering up the white. It's not showing as much with our second coat. So we're gonna go through and coat that. And I'll try to keep as clean as I can. Sometimes I'm better at that than others. Paint, 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 paint. I like to paint and sometimes I get carried away. Okay, so I have a little mistake here. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take my paper towel I got too carried carried away with my song, I think. So we're gonna do like this. Do like that. So you see, I moved it each time. Now I can choose to do one of two things. I can choose to let it dry and come back and put a little black on it, or I could make another leaf there. I think, given the fact that it's really close to the other leaf, I'm gonna just come back with a little black in a minute. It's kind of in the middle of this pumpkin and I don't want the painting because we're trying to dry we're trying to paint dry I don't want it to dry too much and so my time on that is a little limited now there's a several ways on where as we make some shading here on our ribbing uh, you could use black you could use brown. However, the complementary color works nice, which is what I did on this one, with that. So the complementary color for the pumpkin would be blue. The orange would be blue. So I'm just gonna take, and I'm gonna put some blue across. So I'm kind of, you know, rotating around like the ribbing would be. Then I'm gonna start one there on the edge. Now, I think I'm only gonna do three before I start blending it in. Because if I go too much, then it's not gonna work, because it'll dry up on me. And then I've got way too much blue on my paintbrush there. I don't want that much, so I just wipe it off. And you can use some of these brushes again that way. You know, if you have yellow or you have white on them, you can always take and do this and get some of it off. So now I went this way, now I'm gonna go this direction. 
is I'm trying to get a, a quickly get a little bit of the rounding shape that we know a pumpkin has. Of course, they're all different shapes, but you know, the basically it's going to be a rounded. We're trying to make it have dimension in it. So you can start to see how that just quickly. Now, if you know, at home when you're doing this, which I don't have the convenience of doing that here, but at home, you want to stand back. And that's what my art teacher, especially the college one, he used to harp on that. He used to say, you should stand back from your painting half the time. Because you're looking, your job as an artist is to draw someone in and keep them looking. And he said, if you don't see what they're seeing, so like if you hang this up in your house, how does someone see it when they come in? What does it, what does it look like to them? So that's where we're going from that. Uh, you're trying to get someone to go, oh, how'd you do that? What did you do? Could I do something like that? That looks pretty fun. Well, come back and watch the video with them and do it again. Have, a, have your own little paint party. All right, okay, so we're gonna let that be. And I think what I'm gonna do, I'm going to go back and I'm gonna put black back on there. All right, I gotta find a brush that doesn't have any color on it. All right, got one, here we go. Now I'm gonna try to do this as light as I can. I'm just trying to fill in that background color. I'm not trying to texture anything. Got a couple little dots here I'm going to catch too. Now a couple like this, some of those little dots that I caught there, you can always come back with some kind of permanent, doesn't need to have an eye on it, some kind of permanent marker that you can fill some of that in with. You might want a, a thicker one than that, but you can, you can always do that. I suggest that you know, you do that sometimes. Okay, so now let's give our leaves another another layer of color. And I think we'll go back and work on our moon a little bit. All right, so my paint got a little blobby. So I'm gonna take my paper towel, wipe it off. And if you want to make yours more precise, of course, you can always like draw out a leaf. One of the things I um, used to do in the classroom is I had the children or the students, I've taught all ages from three to 103 with workshops I've done in classrooms. And we would draw it ahead of time. Then you can take carbon paper, which some people will know what that is and some might not or you could just simply take the paper that you're drawing that leaf on and you color with a pencil on the back of that and you set up a carbon kind of transfer. So then what you would do is then lay your paper back on on the, the canvas and you would trace over that and you would get that shape. Sometimes I do that as I create a shape and then I go back and I keep that shape because I want to use it another time for a different, a different painting. I have a series of um, ones I use for weddings. So I, uh, when I paint a gift for somebody, I have a general one I've already painted and then I go back in and look at that and say, okay, well those details transfer to this couple also. So now let me think about that. How can I take that and, and uh, then create another a painting? and then just add a few personal touches of that couple. Because it doesn't take a lot when you're doing some of that to just give it that personal touch. Okay, let's get some orange. I think I'm gonna just wipe off the yellow here because I need a smaller brush on some of those sections. Okay, I gotta mix up a little more orange here. Little yellow, little red. 
So this is the uh, negative side, I guess, of uh, painting the black first, but it, for, it sure does beat having to trace around with a paintbrush the edges of the leaf with black because it soon gets, you know, if you get out of line, then it, you know, you just gotta keep going with it. And so I think this is a lot better, a lot easier way to do it. All right, let's see if I can find a little blue. Okay. All right, so let's go back in to our moon. And we're gonna want a, a little white a little yellow and let me show you the original here so a lot of times we see they call it the harvest moon where i got the name for this painting was the fact that when we would look up at the moon this time of year when i was a child my mom would always go oh well that's the harvest moon all right so i'm going to find a brush that i think i can make that effect come with let's see what do i have maybe something like this and then i'm probably going to want this little one available too because i'm going to want some of the little darker spots in the moon so i do have water here i don't use it very often but this is one of the times i'm not going to rinse my brush out in it i'm going to just simply put my brush in there like that and then I'm going to take it in the paper towel and I'm going to wipe it off. And actually, this makes it go faster when you are uh, washing and cleaning your brushes at the end. Washing. Sometimes my southern accent slips in there. Okay, here we go. Now, my little pinky is going to rest on the moon. That allows me to... Uh, be able to do it faster. Now you see it's a little bit bolder line than I think I probably want. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to like do like this, kind of feather it out some. See what that does to it? So this brush had no paint on it at all and I'm just kind of feathering it out. All right, so, and I want to do that quickly because if I don't, It'll just go ahead and dry on there, and then I'll probably end up adding some black back in. All right. I'm going to add just a teeny bit more white on there. Now, this time, I think I'm going to just touch the white there and get a little bit of it off. And I'm going to do like this, let you see what that looks like. Then I'm going to go back up there and just go ahead and get that little bit of white I put on there. And I don't know that there's a right way and a wrong way or how much you want. You might want to leave yours with only a few rings. Now this time I, let, I still have white paint on there. I dipped it in the water because I want it to be a little bit lighter as I come out. I think also this time I'm going to like just barely dip this brush. I want to see, I use my hands sometimes. Let's see how much. I don't want a lot. I just want it a little bit, just a tad. Oh yeah, see how that's starting to, to make a few more lines there, just real thin lines. Okay. All right, I think I'm going to add a little white that way. Let's see. I'm going to add a little white like right like on this. I don't want a lot. You can see my brushes are sometimes old, but they work. You know, it doesn't matter. They work. It's about having fun and painting and, and you know, finding something you can do to relax. You don't have to be an artist. You just have to enjoy painting. Enjoy learning. I, I like to learn about new things and do new types of things. Actually, Mid-Continent Public Library had the storytelling uh, certificate, and I actually was able to participate in that program. 
uh, that was what I ended up doing during a part of my COVID time. And it was so much fun. It was kind of scary sometimes because, you know, it got me out of my comfort zone. But all in all, I enjoyed it. And I came out, you know, just, just really feeling more confident about what I was doing. I see what I'm doing. I'm still going that circular motion. Some on this one is more spots, but I think this time I'm just going to leave it like that. Okay, now I kind of like that circular, so I'm going to go back in. This has a little black in it, and I'm going to go back in and add just a little white to that also. So sometimes it's how it just kind of happens, and each time I do something, it it ebbs and flows a little differently. But that's how art is. You know, that's just art. Now I'm going to bring some of it, see if there's a little bit off it just still left here. Okay, going to dip back in the white, but I'm concerned that that's going to be too much white, so I'm going to wipe some of it back off. It's always better to wipe it off than to have to try to subtract it later, going back in and subtract it later. All right. I think... I think I'm good. I think I'm good. I'm, you know, I, I do have a little white. Sometimes there's a little whitish area. Maybe we could do, maybe I wasn't good. Maybe I was just gonna add a little bit more there. Okay, we'll leave that and just see. We need to go on to the rest because we need to see if we can't get this painting finished here in the uh, near future. So let's see. I want to put a little yellow on my pumpkin. All right, let's go back over here. Here's my yellow brush. Now, I don't want that yellow. It's just like when I'm doing this white and black there. I don't want tons of yellow. That's lots of yellow still on my brush from what I did a while ago. So I'm kind of wanting that, like we were talking about that light coating. So on these ribs, this part right here in the middle would stick out. We have the darker spots, but then we have this. So I'm trying to highlight some of those spots. Now my brush is getting pretty dry. I would think I'm going to put water on it instead of putting it back in the, in the paint, but I don't want a lot. I think I might even do this. Touch with my finger, just a little bit of water, and then just a little bit of water on the brush. Let's see what that does. Yeah, there we go. That'll work. And of course, you know, if you would like to study the pumpkins a little bit more, but add a little bit more yellow. I'm concerned about it being too much again, so I'm just going to wipe some of it back off. I can always add more. You can always set a pumpkin up. And if you like to learn more about shading, hey, go for it. Go for it. Today it's about getting it done quick and having a nice little painting to put on our wall for the, the holiday season of fall. Okay, I'm gonna work a little more on the stem. Looking for my brown brush. That's a really big brown brush. I don't think I want that one. I'm going to, this one has blue. So I'm gonna dip my brush in because I like how this one has a good point on it and I think I might need that for the stem so I'm just like getting as much off and the colors I'm going to use are going to be brown and green so I'm not really worried about if that blue gets mixed in with it a little bit I think it'll be fine I think it'll be fine now I'm going to I'm going to double dip I'm di I dipped in green I'm going to dip in brown See that green's too bold. I need to dip a little more in brown because I want hints of it. Because as we saw in the stem, we can see hints of green in there, but it's not a bold green anymore because the pumpkin has been harvested. And then since I have my orange in there, I'm going to come back down and add a few more of these lines, a little more green in there. See, and you see, sometimes I add too much, but I just got to work it out. Work it down, work it down. 
You can do it. You can do it. Don't give yourself a hard time out there. Do not give yourself a hard time. You just keep going and going and going. And even after we finish this, you don't have to say it's done. What I do is, I always do this with my paintings. You could ask my husband and he would tell you so. I set them out. You know, I paint them. I, I set them out. We have a piano at the house. I set it where the music would be on the piano because I walk by there very often. My piano is actually in my kitchen. When we downsize to a smaller house, that's the only place I could find for the piano. But it works for my paintings and it works to be played as piano. And so I just look at it and I go, oh, well, I like maybe, maybe I want to add a little more. And then when I get it to where I like it all right, then I'll hang it up. I want to make a little round to make like the, the round end there of the steel. Oh, I'm going to add a little green, but I'm concerned I will add too much. And now I wiped it all off. So sometimes some of those little details are the hardest. Okay. And then I always remind myself, you know, you can go back in with simple tools. You can go back in with a Sharpie. You know, you could go back in with a round Sharpie if you wanted, or maybe there's a green color if you wanted. Um, sometimes on canvas, pencil does all right. So I need to sharpen my pencil sometime soon. But you can do that. Um, if you want to do some fancier stuff with the sky, you might be able to do some paint of these paint pens or a pen like this. Color pencils, you know, see what works and see what you might like to do. But you know, you can take this pencil. This is actually dry enough that I can do it. And you can add a little more into it. You know, maybe my college professor wouldn't like that. But now we have, we have let up on how we feel about art and what art should be these days. And I, I'm good with it, you know. I, I'm not going for a, an artist award here. I'm going to have a nice painting for my house. All right, now what I want to do with these is I want to go and I want to go back in there and I want to paint a black line for the center part. So the best brush I have for that is my white one. I don't want to just dab it in the water. I want to wipe it off as best I could. Remember the technique of dip. Don't stir, dip. Because I will be using that water all day long. So I dipped it and then I wiped it back off on the paper towel again and it's pretty clean. And I'm using black, so black's going to cover. And so now what I want to do is I want to take and dip into the black. Now this is a little bit harder. I'm going to actually sit down for this. Now I'm going to dip into water. I'm not mixing it into water. I'm just dipping and shaking off. I dipped it and then I shook it off. Now, my paintbrush seems to be a little wide, so I'm gonna like dab it. I dabbed it off on the paper towel, and that was just out of where you would see it. And now I'm gonna go, this is something, you know, you might go ahead and wait, or you might decide that you want to. Well, let's just try that. These are dry enough. I'm gonna just take my permanent marker, and I'm just going to use it. That works because I have a lot more control of this than I do the paintbrush. Most people do unless they have really painted a lot. I know when I had taught students in the past, they always do. You know, they, they just haven't, they don't have as many, many skills as we adults do. Whatever way you start those, you got to keep going though. 
or your leaf will look like it's going one way one time and one way the other time. So if you do that, just repaint it. Just repaint it. Or sometimes I've left things like that just to see if anybody catches on. Sometimes they catch on and sometimes they don't. Now there's one spot there. The only thing about using this quickly afterwards is the fact that if I get this tip into that paint that is wet, then I will mess this up. It'll get into the fiber of it and I won't be able to, um, I won't be able to use it very long. All right, so while I'm waiting for that to dry a little more, I'm gonna put some little white dots around. It just kind of brings a unity to the painting because we wanna grab somebody's attention. Hopefully this right here grabs their attention. The stem leads us to the moon and the, the lines around the moon lead us to look at the leaves around. All right, so I want the thinnest brush that I can find. I think I'll use this one right here. And I'm wanting to um, not make them circular, but I'm not gonna paint with my brush. I just barely touch, I, I barely touched my brush into the white paint. And then I'm just gonna do like this. I am sticking that finger out because it's my guide. And sometimes it's a very light touch. Sometimes it's a little more. There's a little spot there that doesn't have as much. I'm gonna like make that one a little bigger because I think you won't notice. You'll just think it's something in the sky. A little more white paint. But just keep going and make 25-ish little spots. Because we know some stars are brighter, some are further away and we don't see as much of. Some look like they're twinkling. And you wanna carry it on into this area around the moon too. And as I look back, it looks like to me, I did not put as many leaves on this painting as I did the other one. Uh, personal preferences, you can do whatever you want. You know, maybe you have some favorite colors out there. Maybe you have an accent color in your house and you would like to add that in. Paint, 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 paint those dots, but don't get too thick with them. Keep a light touch on that brush, a light, light, light touch because these will look a little more circular if you have a light touch instead of making it a big old spot on there because there again if you have some that look fairly circular and we know we think our mind goes oh well that's a star that's way out there that's you know we we are as the professor said I always didn't understand why he said that he's like we're tricking the eye it's like, we want to trick it? Well, he said, yes, we do. That's just how painting works. Okay, now this, my, my brush is very dry because I painted the, the little circles for the stars. And now I'm just adding the little highlights of the light on the pumpkin stem. I want to be real careful, or either way you want to dry it with your, your hair dryer. If you see little spots like right there in the center, it's still a little wet. You can see because it's, um, it's glossy. Now, I also think I want to clean up this line. However, I could also do that with, uh, with my marker. I think that's what I'll do. Just take my marker in here because there again, I'm better with a marker. I'm steadier with a marker than I am. And you might want a thicker marker. You do want permanent because if you do it with a water base and any water comes, it might color it, but if any water comes close to your nice painting, then you're gonna end up with a mess. It's going to take it off and, and 
make that color smear across in other ways too, probably. And I'll see as I do that, it almost calls for a few lines like this. And if you'll see on, on this other painting that I did a while back, actually I, as I look at that, that is actually white colored pencil on some of that. And then some of it is pencil line. Well, I think we're getting uh, close to being finished here. As I talked, those little droplets are because I talked and I, yes, <laughs> it happens. Let's see if I go back over. Okay. Well, see how that shored up the line? That shored up our line. Um, I think we've got about what we want. There's, there's some here where the canvas is showing. You could go back in and add more orange, or it can just look like highlights, you know, and maybe that's just the yellow, the, the uh, paint was close enough to the canvas, but it just kind of adds some little extra texture to this. So I'd probably just sign my name. That's what I'm going to do. You always want to sign your paintings because you want to remember. I'm just going to sign my name. I'm going to sign my name, and that's a wrap for our Harvest Moon painting. I hope you enjoyed this, and I hope that you and your friends had a good time. If you had a paint party at your house, or you had a good time um, doing it, and I, I hope that I was simple enough, but yet complex enough for all different skill levels to uh, do this painting. This is Sarah Poff, and I'm so glad that you came along beside of me and painted with me, and I'm ready for that fall season.